What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how you can be the best wide receiver on your team. So we're going to be talking about some key elements of this position that will really help your skills improve. So I hope this video brings you some value, but also fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you want to know the main things you should do on a day-to-day -day basis in regards to drills to help your route running improve, your press releases, etc., your hands, check out that very first link in the description below for our four-week wide receiver on-field workout schedule 2.0. This is a more advanced workout out schedule for four weeks to give you the exact sets, reps, and a video example of each specific drill. So check out that very first link below if interested, fellas. Let's get started with this video. So now, first things first here, one thing I want to talk about to be that best receiver on your team is you have to be able to run every single route on the route tree. To be that guy that your coach goes to where it's like, okay, hey, it's third down, we need a play, we're going to be going to him. It's, it's you know, we, we need a big play, we're down by seven, we're going to put the ball in his hands. You have to be able to do all of the complex routes, all of the basic routes to the absolute best ability you can. Everybody has weaknesses, but we need to be a well-rounded receiver to be the best one. So we're looking at an out and up route here. You have to be able to run a double move route if you want to be that go-to receiver on your team. So let's play this full speed. So we're going to break down the technique of how to run this out and up and why Thielen was able to get so much separation on this. So anytime that you guys are running a, a double move, whether it is a out and up, whether it is a slant and go, whether it is a post corner, you have to make sure that we are a salesman right? That's pretty self-explanatory. We have to sell the route, but not a lot of wide receivers can do that. So Thielen, when he's running this out and up, when he breaks to the out route, what's the first thing that snaps around? His eyes, right? He's snapping his eyes to the quarterback. Now, should a DB be looking at your eyes when he is in man coverage? No, he should not have his eyes up here. High eyes will get him in a lot of trouble, especially when it's a press situation. He is supposed to be watching your hips and reading your body language, right? So when you snap your eyes around, I don't even think that's the most important thing. I think a lot of wide receiver coaches blow the eyes way out of proportion portion. Because to be honest with you, I could look back to the quarterback, but my left shoulder and my left hip in this scenario could be facing upfield, giving away the route. You see people do that all the time on sluggos. They'll break to the slant. They'll glance back to the quarterback, but their hips and shoulders are already going to the vertical portion of the route. That's not being a salesman. You got to sell with your eyes for sure, but your hips and your shoulders have to commit down that 90 degree angle. And that's exactly what Thielen does. And when you can commit your upper body and and sell with your eyes. That's two out of the three things you need to do to sell. Now, what's the last thing? You need to have speed. If you don't have speed to the break point and you take choppy steps, that DB will be all over it. Fellas, the, I, I talk a lot about little details when it comes to route running. If you're familiar with this page, you know that. But when, when it comes down to route running, like I said, it's about the details. But the little things aren't little. Those little things matter because those little things that go into every single route will make a huge difference to this DB. Because when you make a break on this like out and up, and let's say you break, but you take choppy steps and you slow yourself down, he doesn't believe that it's an out route. He's never threatened by the out route. To threaten him by the out route, I have to commit my body language, got to snap my eyes, and I got to run hard. If I can do those three things, why wouldn't a DB bite on it? And that is what it takes to be that elite wide receiver on your team. To be that go-to guy, you got to emphasize these details. So when he breaks, he takes three steps on the out, then he pushes back up vertical. All we need in the red zone is this much space. And you see he puts the icing on the cake by finishing that catch over the top. This is a textbook out and up route here from Adam Thielen, and it's a great way to finish the play with that late hand catch in tight coverage. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Imagine if this was open space. He'd be open by maybe about 5, 10 yards because that DB wouldn't have a goal line to bail him out. All right, so now, next thing to be that wide receiver one on your team, to be the go-to guy, you have to understand coverages. Okay, fellas? So you got to understand the difference between man. you got to understand the difference between man and zone, the different types of man coverage, the different types of zone coverage to make yourself a more successful route runner, to be able to create more separation. Because now, to be a playmaker on your team, you need to get yards after the catch. But yards after the catch comes from what? Separation. And separation comes from knowing how to run the correct routes against the specific coverage you see. It's not based on the route you run. Hey, what move should I do when I have a post route? It's, no, what move should I do on the post route when I'm facing this specific coverage? So let's play this full speed. So this DB is in this like press bail, and Adam Thielen does a great job of attacking the blind spot. So when you come off the ball, how do we know that it's probably zone? DB will be facing like this. His eyes will be in the backfield, or maybe he is trying to read the number two wide receiver to see if he maybe gets into his zone, if it's like a cover two situation, whatever it is. But if he's bailing out of there, and it's like maybe press bail and his eyes are in the backfield, 
then you know, or looking at the quarterback maybe, then you know that it is zone coverage. So when it's zone coverage like this, your route kind of differs. So he's running like a stop route, right? So when this DB is kind of like outside shaded a little bit and you have to run this uh, stop route, where do you think you want to do? Do you think you want to just attack the inside shoulder and break down and put him right on your hip? No, you want to threaten him vertical like you would do on any route. So you would want to attack his blind spot. So how do you know, like, is, does the DB have a blind spot when it's man coverage? Yes, but you wouldn't want to do it when you have this stop route. If it were man coverage and this DB was like inside shade running hip to hip with you, you would do a different type of move. You would maybe put your hand on the back of his hip and swat him by, then slip down. But because it's zone, the way you run the route changes. To be that best wide receiver on your team, you've got to understand that concept. So what does he do? He pushes to the blind spot. Now, this is a spot where this DB can't see him. This makes him think that it's a fade. This is exactly how you would run a fade against zone. You'd maybe give him a little jab inside, then try to slip behind to the blind spot. That will force him to have to turn out of there. That forces him to have to play the fade, and then I can snap down, get some separation, and you see, we are wide open. And this catch right here, this is where yards after the catch happens. To be that playmaker on your team, fellas, wide receiver one, like I said, you have to get yards after the catch, and yards after the catch comes from separation. Separation comes from knowing how to run your routes. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time, and then we'll talk about one more play to make you a wide receiver who will never come off the field. Great job there by Thielen attacking that blind spot. So we're paying attention to this wide receiver here at the right side of the screen. Now, main thing. We talk a lot about route running, press releases, making moves at the top of the route. We talk a lot about all that stuff. And some people would deem it the fancy stuff. I don't think it's that fancy. I think a lot of you guys could all get that accomplished easily with no problem. But the one thing that people don't talk enough about is being an asset in the run game. Because think about every single offense ever. Usually it's probably like nowadays, maybe it's like 65, 70% pass, 30, 35% run. Maybe it's 60, 40, maybe it's 50, 50. But you don't want to be a 60% of the time player. That is only an asset to the team when you run routes. You want to be an asset to the team on every single snap. Because let's face it, fellas, if you're going to be that best receiver on your team, why would we take you off the field? But you got to make yourself an asset in the run game. I see too many wide receivers who are just too cool to block. And it makes no sense to me because every single play is a chance to make a highlight. You know, receivers are always deemed as the flashy guys on the field, the highlight guys. Yeah, let's do that in the blocking. You, you have a whole, like 40% of the time you're taking yourself out of the game if you are not blocking. And blocking comes down to effort. So let's play this thing full speed. This is a textbook effort play from this wide receiver. And this is why he's the best wide receiver on his team. And this is why he was drafted early this year. So he comes off, makes this block. Now watch what happens. Most players would give up, but what does he do? He gets by, hands high, hips by on that defender. And he makes the block that leads this thing to a touchdown. On a highlight tape, fellas, that you were sending to a college, what is this running back? This running back kind of breaks a tackle and then he's able to get up field. But after that, it's pretty much just, just a straight sprint. This is more of a highlight for this wide receiver than this running back. Yeah, he had a great job breaking a tackle. Don't get me wrong. And you would include that in your highlight tape if you're a running back. But this wide receiver, this is a hell of a play. This is a play that you would put on your highlight tape in the first five plays. You put your best plays at the beginning of the highlight tape. So this is probably one of the best plays he had all year and is solely based on effort. What's his responsibility? His responsibility is just to block the safety, right? That's how they draw it up on player. Get across the field, get your head across and block this safety. Now, a lot of guys would quit on this play. Oh, the running back is running away from me. Okay, I'm just going to kind of jog across the field. Whatever happens, happens. No, he wants to go make a play. And that is what it takes, fellas, for you guys to stand out. Now, when you block to be able to make your assignment correct, you got to make sure, again, I address whoever I'm blocking, my assignment under control. I got a good base. I'm in a low pad level position. When I get hands, I keep my feet active. But at the end of the day, fellas, they know you're not an offensive lineman. They know your technique isn't going to be perfect, but they want to see that effort. They Because blocking as a receiver is probably 90% effort, 10% technique, in my opinion, right? I don't think the technique is that hard to get down. So when you can put in this type of effort and make plays downfield, they're only increasing your chances of standing out to high school coaches, college coaches, and pretty much anybody that watches. So let's play this thing again full speed. It's not just about running routes, fellas. It's not just about being that go-to guy who can run every route on the route tree, knowing how how to run routes, you also have to make yourself an asset in the run game. 40 to 50% of the time, you are going to be running the ball. 
So let's make sure I'm an asset 100% of the time on that field. Let's play it again full speed. This is a hell of a play. This play gets me fired up because this is just everything you want to see in a receiver. This is an effort guy. This is not a prima donna guy. This is a guy who's going to sell out on every snap for your team. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, if you'd like a full month-long wide receiver on-field workout schedule, check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.